Hello, this is uh, David Birch again, uh, following up. I think this will be end up being part six. Um, part six of five, I think, is the joke here, because we had a new one popped in there. But anyway, this is about um, re re uh, uh, plotting on weather maps by hand, rather than uh, using uh, various computer tools. And so we have uh, two reasons to read and write on weather maps. Uh, one is uh, we... Um, we uh, let's say we have a route going somewhere. This is a surface analysis map. You see, surface analysis. They're the ones with the ship reports. Let's say we're going um, uh, somewhere, L.A., San Francisco, uh, L.A. to Honolulu, Hawaii here somewhere, and that would be a route something something like that across the map. And then if we have our from the, and this is a particular time. This map was valid at. Um, Zero zero Zulu February twentieth, and let's say we then go back in our log, find out where we were at that time, and then we look at our wind and we look at our wind speed, our wind direction, and our pressure, and we compare that. This is back in history to what the weather map analysis says it should have been, if the map were right. We know our stuff is right because we have calibrated instruments and so forth. So this operation is testing the weather map. And if the weather map's good, we can believe it and take a tactical decisions. If it's not so good, then we should be more cautious in, uh, in uh, decisions we make. So that's one, one job. You plot that on there. Another one is when you go to the forecast, here's now a, Here's now a 48-hour forecast. They look like this. There's no ship reports on the forecast maps. The only winds they show are greater than 30 knots. Maybe 30 or greater, or maybe greater than 30. I'd have to check that. But strong winds. They don't show, for example, if we're in this region right here, back, back, you see, on this route here, down through here. Let me just put that route on here to roughly... I mean, again, I'm being rough here, then I'm going to all of a sudden be, start being precise. But anyway, in this region, you see, this is the forecast map, so it tells us what the pressure is, but it doesn't tell us what's, what wind direction, what wind speed along here. Somewhere, now again, let's keep in mind here, this is an unusual situation. We're looking at uh, what month here? February. In the summer, when we're doing this, hopefully there's a big high here, and these are all trade winds in this the fronts, uh, the no fronts coming through to distort everything, and these will all be trade winds coming down there like that. But you could you could get a front going through there in the summer, and you have to deal with that. So let's start out and just pick a point somewhere here, and I just I wrote down just a pick of that area. That is about 31 degrees 30 north, 138 uh, zero zero west. And let's say we're somewhere that in that point. Okay, so first of all, I have to plot that point. Now, um, okay, let me just say here's the easy way to do it. You get a pair of things like this. These are unfortunately these are $125. But if you have this, then you just put that up there. These are 10, 30 degrees, 40 degrees. I put this on here to here, and then I can just go over here, whatever, somewhere. I don't have to do this every time. I just have to do it once, and then I just mark off a scale, right? And um, and then I have a scale. That's my one degree. Keep in mind that's a Mercator plot. So what is 10 degrees? You know how the width of the number of millimeters per Per degree here is not the same as up here. See that? They get uh, like that. So that's all done. I do the same thing with longitude. So somewhere, it doesn't matter where I do it, I could go over here somewhere and uh, mark the mark the longitude. Uh, so now I have created my own personal longitude scale, which I need. But not everybody has these, and you don't need like you don't need these. But it's really it's really quite nice for weather work. But I have a ruler, and rulers have these tick marks on here. This is a common ruler; it's your navigation ruler. But if you look at this, if I put this on here, that's you know, there's nobody going to be nice to us here and make that exactly 10 units, and you know, so it's not 10 at all. But it doesn't have to be 10. That's the whole point of this exercise. I just go up here. Let's see, what do I've got? Uh, 
here's 10, 20. Okay, so I can just take, I'll just put 20 units across there. Let me just rotate that up. As long as it's even, I can multiply, divide, all that. So there it is. So I have the 4 here, the 5 here, the 6 here. And so then uh, that's 20. So every two of those is a degree. So I can go here and just mark this. It doesn't matter. I, I, I could do it somewhere over here out of the way of my where I care about, but it doesn't matter. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's good. That's in the middle. Uh, there is that. Now I'm going a little bit fast because I notice these videos get a little bit long, but you can be careful when you do this. Okay, so that's that. So that, now that's all done. Now what you need to do, then you just come along here and uh, notice I line up, not, not the edge, that's a little, not as careful as I use this line in the middle here. Line that up so that's really nice and straight. Now I can come down here and make a scale over here. Should be the same scale I made with my $100, $100 plotters, but this one didn't cost me anything. So now I have a scale. And it, if I did it, if I did every, whoops, did I rotate that? If I do everything carefully and not rushing to make a YouTube video or something, these would be good. I can see already that I've been a little bit crude on that one, but you got, uh, okay. So there's 10 divisions, and there's 10 divisions. This is that way. So now I have a scale. Well, I need to do the same thing for the longitude, and you would do it the same way. You would rotate this from here to, uh, let's see. If I did 10, that's clear down there. So you could do 6, well, you got to just hunt around and find something that works that you can divide by. Or maybe grab a different ruler that's a spacing a little different, or this one in the back here. There, whatever. So you do that. For now, I'm going to use the uh, high price uh, spread over here for the longitude. Okay, and that's that. So now we're saying our position. So we have done the hard part. We put tick marks on a scale that doesn't have tick marks. Now, um, let's do 3130. So this is 30, 31, and half of that's 3130. So that's uh, 30, okay. Oh, here, that's what happened here. I'm on a plastic table, and it's rolling. So there's 31, there's 3130. So there's, uh, there, that, that's my uh, latitude. At, that's my latitude, not where I am now. This is 48 hour forecast. So I'm up here somewhere right now. But my, um, my dead reckoning, my dead reckoning and my estimate of my wind, uh, my estimate of my speeds and course, I'm projecting that this is where I'll be at this time. This is a projected or an estimated position. And what did I say here? 138.00. So 138, that's 130. So that's two degrees in. So I just go over here and get that distance right there. Again, we don't have to be exactly precise, but the better. The, OK, so that's that point. So there is, um, I'll just get a little artwork here. OK, so that's where I think I'm going to be at uh, that time. Now, that's the plotting. And, that, and if you're plotting on here to check your position, it's the same sort of thing. You need to just carefully you know, interpolate the latitude and longitude to put your position on there, at this, and then from your logbook, do it at the right time. Now, now we have to know what is the wind and pressure and so forth here. Well, OK, so what is this? This is a 20 millibars. This has got to be, this is a high, so it's going up 4. This one we should find somewhere is 24, right, exactly. So that's 24. So that's 24. Look, so now I come over here, something, you know, like, something like there. That's 20. Um, so it's like 20, 21 and a half, something. But one thing you could do is just by eye, without doing anything fancy, I mean, you can just kind of go, you know, just you could do it better than a computer, probably, you know, and you just draw in the isobar. Now, this is this is uh, this is uh, 24. So this would be 22. 
So then I go here, and that's 21. So if this map is precisely right, and I have a good calibrated barometer, and the map's precisely right, when I get to this time up here, my barometer should be reading 10, um, let's see, 1024, uh, 1023, 1022.5, roughly 1022.5. Now, the extent that this map is not right, that's very interesting. Is this system moving that way? And so therefore, and this thing is low, I mean, do I read lower? Now in the summer, when you're actually sailing here, that's going to, and I'll come back to some real practical cases for ocean sailing in the summer, but normally that's a high, and then you want to be careful, is that high moving in on you or not? But that's the way you've got to start. You've got to look and see, what should it be? All right, that's that. Now, next step we have to figure out is, um, um, what's the pressure? What's, well, we did the pressure. The pressure was uh, 10, 20, 1022, 1023, 10, 1022.5. 10, 1022.5. Now, what's the wind speed? Now, the wind speed, that's going to be, we have to do, we have to figure that. That's going to be, the wind speed is going to depend on this latitude, which we know is 31.5, 30, yeah, 31.5 degrees. And it's going to depend on this isobar spacing. But we can, right now, figure the direction of the wind without doing anything. Uh, the direction of the wind is going to be out. Is going to be uh, clockwise around the highs and uh, out of the high. So the wind speed at this point, you know, I just imagine another isobar kind of going right through it, right? Something like that. Um, you know, something like that. And it's going to be out of the high. So this wind is going to be something like that direction. Blow, going that way. So the wind would be out of the, um, you know, southeast, be out of the southeast. So the wind would be southeast, roughly. And I'm going to put, okay, so let me, and that, it's not going to be very big, uh, maybe 10 knots or something, but we can, we can figure that. Okay, so let's figure out what that is. And that's, um, so now we need to know that spacing. And that spacing, oh, we need to know the space. Well, the spacing of, the way our table works in our textbook, you want the spacing of a four millibar isobar. So you could uh, take this, this you know, uh, it's gonna be something like this. That's the spacing of those isobars at that point. Some, something about like that, that distance. And what is that? And that's in, that's equal to one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. It looks like it's about five, um, Five degrees, five degrees. So now you go to the book, or we have a formula in that book, and you could use the formula if you have a calculator, or you just use a table. And let's see, I don't know if this is going to zoom in or not. I'll try. Uh, what, what do we have? Uh, we have a latitude, 31 uh, degrees. So we're just a little bit above this, 31 down into here. And we have five, five, five degrees. So this is 13 at uh, 13 at 30, and then here's 4. So it's really going to be about 12. I mean, I can interpolate that by hand. That's about 12 knots. And this, this table takes into account the friction, and so that's what we expect, 12 knots. 12 knots. So I don't know how we want to draw that. You could draw that as a 10 or a 15. It doesn't matter, but you could put 12 knots. 12 knots what we get and so if you put if you want so it's going to be the higher end of a 10 this is a 10 or the lower end of a 15 it's going to be something like that but I'm, I'll just make it as 10 so that, that's the wind we expect in that area now look at this see these isobars are getting closer so we picked I don't this is a random point obviously and also not analyze. You could do this a lot more carefully if you're not in a hurry. If, as you go up here, this wind's getting stronger, right? And if you come down, it's getting weaker because isobars are that way. Then there is a subtlety, and these are pretty straight. If we just look at our area that we're looking at here, these isobars are relatively straight. And all of this stuff in, in this table here, in this table, assumes the isobars are straight. Once the isobars are curved, then you have to make a correction for that. 
And that correction, um, that correction is explained in this table. So when they're curved around a high, which is what we've got, when they're curved around a high, the wind's actually stronger than you get from this table by some corrections you can make here. If it's around the low, on the other hand, the wind's actually weaker than you predict with that first table by an amount you get here. But it's all in tables, and it takes just those, uh, just those few uh, minutes to resolve that. So that's that example plotted out by hand, uh, the, sort of the old-fashioned way. With graphics tools, and if you download your maps in a computer, there's all sorts of other ways to do this. And keep in mind, this is different than what you see on the grid files. The grid file, you could then compare what that wind says with the grid file from 48 hours. That would be interesting to do, very interesting to do. And often it's going to agree very well. In other cases, it will not. So you have to be careful. And in a sense, these handmade maps, these man-made, man-made maps from the OPC, they're much more reliable than the uh, grib files. But once you confirm, once you confirm that the grib file's right or very close, then of course life is tremendously simpler with navigating and doing your tactics with those grib files. But that step of comparing the grib file to this map is a crucial one for uh, safe, uh, successful uh, weather tactics. I'll stop there.